very good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome to the isa national online pg classes yeah thank you Shant, and uh, uh, welcome all to the isa national online pg class and uh, today we have amongst us uh, professor nivedita pani who shall be talking about anesthetic considerations in transurethral section of prostate and its uh, associated issues and uh, i am very sure that uh, the students will be enriched by the deliberations during the uh, future course of class uh, we also have amongst us dr uh, venkat giri uh, president ifc national so before i invite dr nishan sai to carry forward uh, i invite dr giri to say a few words Good evening, uh, uh, Secretary, Honorable Secretary, Dr. Navin, uh, Faculty, uh, Dr. Nivedita, Madam, uh, Dr. Nishant, and the students. Continuing with our uh, weekly academic programs, uh, we have URP today, which is a very important uh, topic. Uh, even from the time I was learning that you had a topic on URP, that uh, many things must have been changed now. It is uh, for you and we all to learn from uh, Professor Nivedita Bani, who is a very learned teacher and academician and a good friend of mine. Let us, all of us, hear from uh, Dr. Nivedita. I request Nishant to please introduce the speaker formally to the uh, students and carry it forward. Right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And uh... yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so I'll need to be the host, sir. I'm unable to share currently. So uh, it is my actual proud privilege to be able to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Professor uh, Nibedita Pani, ma'am. And uh, do yes, sir. So, ma'am is the uh, professor and uh, head of the Department of Anesthesiology and Critical Care. At the SCB Medical College at uh, Katak in Odisha, she has received various awards. The R K Sethi Award for Best Paper in the uh, Critical Care at R S A C P Con at uh, Rajasthan in 2018, and the second prize at uh, Rohtak in 2019. She has been awarded by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare for the best performing national training for LSAS in 2014. She has received the Professor G.C. Mitra Memorial Oration in 2014, the Imams HQ Chairman's Appreciation Award in 2014 and 18, uh, Professor M.C. Mishra Memorial Award in 2013 and 2020, and the Best Scientific State IMA Paper Award in 1996 and 2013. For three years consecutive, uh, consecutively, she won the Professor S. Satpati Memorial Award in 1999, 2000 and 2001 and the Professor S. Pramanik Memorial Oration in 2019. She is the uh, president of the IMA Odisha from, uh, in 2021 and 22, and has been an invited speaker at various state, zonal and national level uh, conferences. The IMA National President's Appreciation Award for Women for Best Educational Activity, she won in 20, 2019 and 20, and also the IMA awarded her for being the COVID warrior award uh, last year. She has uh, publications in various uh, journals, the IJA, the JOCP, the Journal of Indian Journal of Pain, Journal of Medical Science and Clinical Research, amongst various others. And uh, ma'am, as we all know, has been the vast vice president of the national ISA and the governing council member uh, from the East Zone where I belong. And because uh, I have been there in the uh, East Zone, I have been witness to many, many lectures by ma'am. And it is uh, really uh, a proud privilege for us that ma'am has been able to spare her precious time to discuss TURP today, which is a very important lecture for uh, postgraduates. Ma'am, this is the 34th lecture of the series. And uh, during the course of the time that uh, your session will go on, every uh, speaker will be muted. And uh, just in case there are any questions by any of the listeners, uh, they will post it on the chat box and we will deal with it uh, after the session. We will discuss all the questions after the session. Uh, just in case there are any questions that uh, you want to ask from the listeners, 
uh, again the listeners can just type their answers in the chat box itself so uh, over to you ma'am uh, thank you dr nishant uh, can i uh, share my slide please ma'am please nishant uh, can mute everybody right sir uh, nishant is visible yes sir ma'am uh, we just need to go in the full screen mode i have given the full screen uh not the full screen mode yet ma'am just a minute again again i i don't know i'm you need to unmute yourself Uh, you are muted ma'am you need to unmute yourself please yes your screen is uh, not full screen yet ma'am i in my laptop it is showing full screen so ma'am what we can do is uh, uh, first open the powerpoint presentation in the full screen mode and then start sharing okay Unshare from now. is it okay uh it's not full screen ma'am can you press f5 once please yes it is okay it's not in the full screen yet ma'am just a minute then i'm just i don't know what's the problem the f5 just bear for a few minutes and uh, we will start the class or otherwise uh, we can start it otherwise also madam Yes, ma'am. This is full screen now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can I start? Yes, please. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, 
good afternoon everybody i must uh, thank the uh, prof dr navin malhotra sir and also the president sir for giving me opportunity to present my topic anesthetic consideration in turp uh, thank you dr venkatgiri sir my friend and also dr navin malhotra i am really feel honored to have you all in this forum thank you very much from the core of my heart jai jagannath Uh, the topic is anesthesia consideration in turp i'll be covering in between uh, some questions are there there are total 17 questions are there in total topic in i will be covering so kindly write your uh, answers in your chat box and please count also how many you have answered because immediately following the question i'll be answering also the questions so last who has got the highest at least please write who have done full 17 out of 17 we must be a big, big big hand to this boys or girls thank you so the topic started is anesthetic consideration in turp so let us go to the anatomy and pathophysiology of the prostate prostate develops around 12 weeks of intrauterine life where it lies in the apex of the male bladder and surround the urethra what are its sizes 4 into 3 into 2 cm what are its weight around 20 g how many integrated zones it has got it has got anterior zone peripheral zone central zone and pre prostatic zone as you know it has been divided into five lobes what are the lobes anterior lobe posterior lobe middle lobe two lateral lobes it is composed of glandular tissue in fibromuscular stroma as you know the hypertrophy of the inner adenomatous zone the transition zone result in bhp or benign hypertrophy of the prostate and outer non adenomatous zone the peripheral zone result in carcinoma of the prostate as you know it is surrounded by two capsule what are the two capsule inner true capsule outer false capsule inner true capsule is basically the condensation of the prostatic tissue and outer false capsule is the visceral layer of pelvic fossa this prostatic venous plexus is present between these two capsule the middle and the posterior lobes most often associated with symptoms of the urinary tract obstruction how it happens the hyperplasia develops that leads to urethral orifice narrows so what causes these symptoms prostate grows with age and the pressure on the urethra restrict the urine flow the next question will come what are the nerve supply to the prostate it arises from the prostatic plexus which originates from the inferior hypogastric plexus so it has got both sympathetic fibers parasympathetic fibers look at the pictures the sympathetic fibers they come from the t11 to l2 and the parasympathetic fibers from the s2 to s4 the questions being asked the pain fibers from the prostate prostatic urethra and bladder mucus originates from where it originates from the sacral nerves s2 to s4 then what are the artery supply and venous drainage the artery supplies from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery inferior vesicular artery middle rectal artery internal pudendal artery the capsular artery is the second main branch of the prostate supplying the glandular tissue then venous drainage is the prostatic plexus of the veins and the the valveless communication exists between the prostatic and vertebral plexus through which the prostatic carcinoma spreads what are the common symptoms occurs the common symptoms are decrease in the urinary stream hesitancy pain or burning dribbling or leaking during urination after leaking during urination after urination and intermittency the patient will feel that the bladder never completely empties so what are the surgical procedure being done for this turp transurethral electro vaporization transurethral laser technique balloon dilatation prostate stents prostatectomy and suprapubic retropubic and perineal and laparoscopy when a patient will come to you in the preoperative assessment 
generally the as you know the post prostate present the coming for the qrp are frequently are elderly patient with co existing diseases what are the co existing diseases you expect the cardiac disease 67% abnormal ecg 77% chronic obstructive pulmonary disease 29% diabetes mellitus 8% so when you are doing a pre operative assessment you have to take a detailed history and also a physical examination let us come what happens to the geriatric patient in the cns there will be reduced functional cns tissue what it will lead to there will be decrease requirement of the anesthetics reduced temperature controlling ability so the patient will be prone to develop hypothermia then in the pns there is increased sensitivity to the neuromuscular blockers so there will be prolonged action of the neuromuscular blockers in the cardiovascular system what happen there is baroreceptor function impaired so especially in the ccf or congestive cardiac failure patient what will happen there will be reduced cvs ability to compensate for hemorrhage and vasodilator action of the anesthetics so it will lead to severe hypotension when cardiac diseases are common there will be cvs function is also impaired you are expected to know so anesthetic agent all are cardiac suppression so you have to optimize before surgery so when you are doing a psc you have to keep everything in mind and accordingly you have to do it then what happened to the respiratory system there will be reduced alveolar surface area reduced diffusion capacity pulmonary fibrosis the closing capacity is more than the frc and there is ultimately there will be reduced pulmonary reserve in the renal what happen there is impaired renal function prolonged action of the drug and advancing as and ga there will be risk of the aki so let us come we have gone through a lot little bit uh, few slides so now you just uh, come up let me ask you a few questions so you try to answer in your chat box so my number one question is a spinal block t5 is required to prevent discomfort from peritoneal irritation during surgery true or false please go through it a spinal block to t5 is required to prevent discomfort from peritoneal irritation during surgery true or false number 2 spinal anesthesia is the method of choice true or false third qrp syndrome only occurs following qrp again i am focusing qrp syndrome only occurs following qrp true or false number 4 bladder distension pain is carried by sympathetic fibers of t11 to l2 bladder distension pain is carried by sympathetic fiber t11 to l2 true or false we are getting a lot of answers madam ah so nice so yeah. let me go to the answers yes uh, what what i'd encourage the listeners is that you know you can just write a true b false c true that way is then we'll know because uh, false or true which we don't know which number it is but yes we are getting a lot of responses ma'am okay so nice uh, dr nishant you have to coordinate okay. yes yes absolutely yeah. <laughs> so a is the answer is false so spinal block to t5 is not required at all t10 is more than enough then spinal anesthesia is a method of choice definitely true then qrp syndrome only occurs following qrp no it is false because in the qrp lot of complication occurs why only qrp syndrome okay then bladder distension pain is carried by the sympathetic fibers t11 to l2 which we have already discussed my previous slide so nishan 
So yeah. I hope a lot of people have answered well. So you yeah. must give a big thanks and big hand to the, all the postgraduate students. Yes, a big hand, big hand to all of you. I think uh, Anjana 1A is one uh, doctor that I see have who has mentioned all correct. I'm sure there must be many. Uh, so yes, ma'am. Yes, Dr. Hina also has got it all right. Okay, it is so nice. Right, ma'am. Okay, we'll move now to the chapter. Yes, ma'am. Okay, dear students, let us, we have got, our patient has come. We have to advise what? The preoperative investigation. What are the preoperative investigation will do? Hemoglobin, DC, TLC, platelet count, blood sugar, urea, creatinine, serum electrolyte, urine routine microscopy, cultural sensitivity, chest x-ray, ECG, USG, then blood grouping and cross-matching, PSA, serum alkaline phosphatase, echocardiography, and special test for the particular circumstances like clotting studies, PT, INR, if on warfarin, or ABG and PFT if severe respiratory diseases is suspected, chest radiogram is suspected metastasis. So, what are you should have in your mind? while managing the patient. Keep the BP plus minus 20 to 30% of the baseline, slow heart rate and decrease preload and maintain afterload and hematocrit should be more than 28% and perioperative temperature should be 35.4%. It should be our goals during the anesthesia. Then what are the preparation of the patient we should do? We should do the pre-anesthetic examination, measures to optimize the status of the patient, antibiotic coverage, medication of the coexisting diseases, spine examination. Why spine examination? For all the geriatric patient, you are expected that may be fusion or anything. So you have to do the spine examination, fasting and blood arrangement and cross-matching. Then what monitoring we should do? Minimum monitoring we should have pulse oximetry, NIBP, ECG, mental status. If the patient is in spinal anesthesia, definitely we can know the mental status of the patient. Or regional block, then temperature, blood loss, hemoglobin and hematocrit, and serum sodium concentration. Then, as you know, in the TORP is the gold standard of care for the benign prostate hypertrophy. Uses an electrical wear loop to surgically cut and remove excess prosthetic tissue and effective in relieving the symptoms and restoring urine flow. How the surgical procedure is done? Operation is performed through a modified cystoscope. Prostatic tissue is resected using an electrically anorized wire loop and the prostate capsule is usually preserved. The question is being asked, why continuous irrigation is necessary? Because to distend the bladder and to wash away the blood and dissected prostatic tissue. Then come, what are the irrigation fluid nature it should be? The irrigation solution should be, this question is very much asked in the viva, uh, in the MD, DNB, or DA examination. What, how is the irrigation solution quality should be? It should be isotonic, electrically inert, non-toxic, transparent, inexpensive, non-hemolytic, non-metabolized, and easy to sterilize. So let us go one by one. What is this osmolality? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Distilled water, osmolality is zero. Advantage, improved visibility. Disadvantage, hemolysis, hemoglobinemia, hemoglobinuria, hyponatremia. Glycine, 1.5%, osmolality, 200. Legs and glycine, 1.2%, osmolality is 175. Advantage of both are less likelihood of Taub syndrome, but disadvantage is 
ट्रांजिएंट पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव विजुअल लॉस सिंड्रोम हाइपर अमोनिमिया हाइपर ऑक्सालिरिया सर्बिटल 3.3 परसेंट ऑस्मोलालिटी 165 सेम एस ग्लाइसिन मेंस लेस लाइकलीहुड ऑफ टॉप सिंड्रोम एंड हाइपर ग्लाइसिमिया डिसएडवांटेजेस पॉसिबल लैक्टिक एसिडोसिस एंड ऑस्मोटिक डायरेसिस मानाइटल 5 परसेंट ऑस्मोलालिटी इज क्वाइट हाई दैट इज 275 this is a iso osmolar solution advantage not metabolized but disadvantage osmotic diuresis possibility of the acute intravascular volume expansion cytal that is 178 osmolality and the advantage is same like sorbitol and manitol means iso osmolar solution not metabolized and disadvantage is like also manitol and sorbitol that hyperglycemia lactic acidosis osmotic diuresis and acute intravascular volume expansion glucose 2.5% osmolality 139 Le advantages less likely to have prp syndrome but disadvantages is hyperglycemia urea 1% the osmolality is 167 and less likelihood of the turp syndrome then factors for which there is always the chances of the rate of fluid absorption we can expect it number 1 size of the gland hydrostatic pressure of the irrigating fluid maximum 60 cm height duration maximum you can go 90 minutes at the rate of 20 ml per minute integrity of the capsule number of the open sinuses skills of the operating surgeons congestion of the gland and intravesicular pressure that is should be maximum 15 cm water then how long is irrigation continue after the surgery and what irrigation solution is used this this the question is how long is the irrigation continue after the surgery what the things being done a three lumen catheter is inserted at the end of operation why to allow the continuous irrigation for up to 24 hours after the operation what are the solution we use normal saline then comes the choice of anesthesia technique one is a regional anesthesia one is a general anesthesia the question is being asked what are the advantages of the regional what are the disadvantages what are the advantages of the ga what are the disadvantages the advantage is that it useful in patient with significant respiratory disease for good post of analgesia allows to monitor the level of consciousness and detect early sign of prp syndrome earlier recognition of the bladder perforation or capsular tear possible reduce blood loss but disadvantages does not prevent penile erection which can interfere with surgery in the general anesthesia advantages are useful in patient who are unable to lie supine for a long time penile erection can be prevented by deepening of the anesthesia allows better control of carbon dioxide reducing reduce bleeding the disadvantages are position reduces the frc lithotomy increase risk of aspiration and post of analgesia is needed let us come what is the technique we do and why it is the anesthetic choice one question i have asked you the spinal anesthesia is given you all have written yes the spinal anesthesia it is true why because monitoring of the patient mentation you can know about the patient mentation vasodilatation and peripheral pulling of the blood it reduces blood loss it provide post operative analgesia homeostasis of the neuroendocrine system and immune response early recognition of the trp syndrome and bladder perforation decreased hypercoagulable tendency in the post operative period and it reduces the incidence of the deep brain thrombosis then question is being asked why the subarachnoid anesthesia is preferred to epidural because it is technically easier to form in the elderly the duration of surgery is generally not very long so you don't have to need to put the put the catheter whatever is the duration is not so long within spinal anesthesia whatever you are giving you can finish up the surgeon can finish up the incomplete block of the sacral nerve roots that occasionally it occurs with the extradural technique 
it is avoided when you are using the subarachnoid anesthesia but regional anesthesia does not abolish the obturator reflex this reflex is blocked by muscle paralysis during general anesthesia or obturator not blocked so how you will do the technique of the subarachnoid block check for any contraindication of the subarachnoid block number 2 a fluid preload of the 500 to 1000 ml warm normal saline or ringer lactate preloading assist compensation of the spinal induced vasodilatation and hypotension it provides a small sodium load to counter hyponatremia often occurring with turp a confirmed block till at least t10 should be done intraoperative sedation with iv midazolam can be considered for anxious or confused patient means early manifestation of the turp syndrome should be kept in mind thermometer warming blankets fluid warmer should be kept available for detection and prevention of the hypothermia due to cold irrigation solution how much bupropion you should give generally 2.5 to 3 ml of the 0.5% hyperbaric bupropion may be used let us know what are the tips about spinal number 1 intraoperative fluid overload is less dvt is less use vasopressure for hypotension technically easy than epidural sacral sacral sparing is no use ns than rl more osmolar and more sodium and one iva these are the tips you must keep in the mind while doing a prisonal block in the general anesthesia where it is given when there is contraindication to spinal cannot lie down for longer time cough during lying down you can use with ett or prosel lma dilation hyponatremia because prolonged neuromuscular blockers advantages on cooperative patient or in patient who require hemodynamic or ventilatory support it abolishes the obturator reflex but the disadvantages inability to monitor the patient level of mentation because the patient are taken the ga so what are the complication you i have asked you one question turp only syndrome occurs turp no turp can be associated with number of the complication number one turp syndrome lithotomy position complication hemorrhage bladder perforation prostatic capsule perforation hypothermia septicemia and hypotension the main challenges are blood loss and turp syndrome due to excessive absorption of the irrigating fluid in the turp syndrome a constellation of the sign and symptoms caused by the absorption of the large volume of the isotonic irrigating fluid through prostatic veins or breaches in the prostatic capsule if you ask what are the incidence 1 to 8% what are the mortality 0.2 to 0.8% what are the syndrome characterized by hypervolemia hyponatremia hypo osmolarity hypervolemia hyponatremia hypo osmolarity this turp syndrome can occur as early as 15 minutes of the surgery remember that you have to be very alert 15 minutes after surgery and it can last up to 24 hours after surgery the risk factor the hydrostatic pressure of the irrigation if the hydrostatic pressure of the irrigation is high okay look at the picture an excessively distended bladder prostatic gland is large prostatic capsule is violated during surgery and duration of surgery more than 60 minutes the turp syndrome risk factors again i am summarizing the factor which increase the risk of the turp syndrome pre existing hyponatremia or pulmonary edema prostate size larger than 60 to 100 g reduced venous pressure hydrostatic pressure more than 60 cm water inexperienced or slow surgeons so in the turp syndrome the most widely used indicator of the is the volume gain in the sodium dilution or breath alcohol level how do you calculate whether there is volume gain is not there or not what you should do 
ethanol 1% can be added to the irrigation solution and patient breath is tested for ethanol every few minutes. And a positive test indicates a significant quantity of the fluid has been absorbed. So what are the other methods? You know that the fluid has been absorbed. One is the volumetric fluid balance, CBP train, plasma electrolyte concentration, irrig irrigation of the solutes evaluation, and transthoracic impedance change and the patient weight gain. So how you calculate the volume, how much volume is observed? Remember this formula, pre of serum sodium divided by the post of serum sodium into ECF minus ECF. Accordingly, you can calculate the volume observed. What are the classical triad of the TERP syndrome features? Hypertension, bradycardia, altered mental status. What are the symptoms commonly? Cardiopulmonary, hematologic and renal, and central nervous system. In the cardiopulmonary, hypertension, bradycardia, dysrhythmia, respiratory distress, cyanosis, hypotension, shock, death. Hematological and renal, hyperglycinemia, hyperammonemia, hyponatremia, hyposmolality, hemolysis, anemia, acute renal failure, and death. And CNS, nausea, vomiting, confusion, restlessness, blindness, twitches and seizures, lethargy and paralysis, dilated or non-reactive people, coma and death. So this irrigation fluid enters the bloodstream directly through the open prostatic venous sinuses. Primarily, when prostatic capsule is violated during surgery, how much irrigation solution can be observed? Eight liters of irrigation solution can be observed by the patient during TRP. The average rate of absorption is 20 ml per minute, may reach also 200 ml per minute. So average weight gain by the end of surgery if the irrigation fluid is absorbed around 2 kg. So let us come one by one, what happens to the different irrigation fluid? Distilled water is transparent, electrically inert, extremely hypotonic. What will cause? Hemolysis, shock and renal failure. Several nearly isotonic irrigation solutions that have replaced the plain distilled water. Most commonly used, what is that? That is glycine 1.5%. To maintain their transparency, these solutions are prepared moderately hypotonic. Glycine has direct toxic effect, heart, it decreases 17.5% in cardiac output. So this, if you give the arginine, it reverses the myocardial depression. Retina, transient visual disturbances or blindness. Encephalopathy and seizure via the NMDA potentiation. So magnesium exert a negative control on the NMDA receptor. Hypomagnesemia caused by dilution may increase the susceptibility to the seizure. The most common metabolite of the glycine, as I've told you, ammonia oxalic acid. So hyperoxaluria could compromise renal function in patient who has got previously renal diseases. And hyperammonemia occurs secondary to arginine deficiency. So what happens to hyperammonemia? This is a short question com comes about the irrigation fluid of the TERP syndrome. The hyperammonemia manifestation appears how much hour after surgery? Generally, one hour after surgery. What are the, the level it goes? More than 500 millimol blood ammonia level. What are the symptoms patient gets? Nauseated, vomits, and then become comatose. When the patient awakens, if the ammonia level is less than 150. What should you treat? 4 gram means 950 milliosmolar per kg of L-arginine is infused. In how much minute? 3 minutes, it decreases the serum ammonia. Some center also they are giving prophylactic arginine. Then comes cytal. As I have told you that cytal is very occasionally used and it is a mixture of the sorbitol and manitol. There is bacterial contamination chances there. This is secondary to sugars in the cytal solution make it a rich medium for the bacteria. Why there is bacterial con uh, contamination? Because the sugars in the cytal solution is a rich medium for the bacteria. Then exaggerated hyperglycemia and diabetic patient. As you know, this pulmonary edema can occur in the cardiac patient 
there mannitol rapidly expand the blood volume and it is helpful so we have read a lot now be relax dr nishant be ready we are going for the question 2 yes ma'am okay so you asked the features of trp syndrome include all of the following except so there is tachycardia hypotension hypertension nausea or seizures the features of turp syndrome include all except this is the question yeah so we are getting response ma'am uh, mostly it is a tachycardia excellent is must, yes yeah. the answer is tachycardia yes thank you very much thank you for your very good attention thank you yes ma'am most of them have written a Uh, Some, okay question 3 yes and there's another question management of turp syndrome uh, can include all of the following except uh, a intubation and ventilation b large volumes of intravenous 0.9% saline intravenous furosemide d is 8.4% soda bicarb sodium bicarbonate or e diazepam all of the above except management of turp syndrome so uh, all are encouraged to type in the chat box uh, which of the following will not be given <laughs> because this question is little confusing <laughs> let's yeah. see what what are they doing so more, many of them have written b large volumes and then there are there is an occasional e also diazepam some people are saying okay no see uh, diazepam yes you can but in the top syndrome it is better to avoid you give the the answer is large volume of Absolutely. the iv 0.9 saline okay right so most of them have answered b only ma'am uh, this is the large volumes of intravenous so you volume. must congratulate them yes ma'am they, they are an attentive lot this time the the <laughs> graduates and the listeners okay thank you dear students let's go to the other chapter next chapters so please please look at the graph is the graph is visible Is it yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Tuberculosis syndrome pathophysiology. Okay, just look at the picture. If you remember this picture, you don't have to worry. Risk factor: open prostatic sinus, high irrigation pressure, length of resection, hypotonic irrigation. Please look at my cursor. Okay, this irrigation absorption leads to increased volume. That leads to hypervolumia. That leads to hypertension and bradycardia. and also left ventricular failure this hypertension and bradycardia that leads to increased capillary leak and with that when you are giving the spinal block there is hypovolemia and hypotension ultimately they are going to cardiovascular collapse next next look at my cursor the solute changes irrigation absorption when the solute changes that is decrease it goes to hyponatremia hypoosmolality pulmonary edema respiratory failure cardiovascular collapse respiratory failure they lead to death this pulmonary edema also here it leads to hemolysis that also lead to acute renal failure that goes to death then <coughs> then come to the d so when there is solute less either due to blood loss or due to diuretic that all lead to hyponatremia hypoosmolality pulmonary edema respiratory failure and death so when the solute increases due to glycine or ammonia that ultimately leads to visual changes and seizures and also encephalopathy as i have told you earlier solute decrease leads to hypoosmolality that pulmonary edema respiratory failure and death it leads to hemolysis and acute renal failure cerebral edema that leads to visual seizures ultimately that goes towards death if there is lot of seizures then there will be problems and encephalopathy all this also lead to ultimately to death 
I hope I have able to explain the uh, slides. I hope everybody is clear. Or if anybody wants in the holes after my session, I can again also explain. If you remember this, ultimately this will be there. Remember. Then, what are the manifestation? The CNS dysfunction is due to acute hypoosmolarity. The blood-brain barriers is impermeable to the sodium but freely permeable to water. Cerebral edema is caused by acute hypoosmolality can increase intracranial pressure. So bradycardia, hypertension by the Cushing's reflex. The rise in the intracranial pressure is directly related to the gain in body weight during TURP. So what will happen? In some cases, they have seen that moderate hyponatremia is associated with severely neurological symptoms. And severe hyponatremia causes also no symptoms. Then what are the determined factor? Determined factor is the rate at which serum sodium level falls rather than the total. So faster the fall, the greater the incidence of the CNS symptom. There may be accompanied by easy abnormality. What are this? That loss of alpha wave activity and irregular discharge at the high wave amplitude and slow wave activity. So what will happen? If the sodium is less than 120 milliequivalent per liter, patient will complain confusion and restlessness. Less than 115, somnolence and nausea. Less than 110, tonic, clonic, seizures and coma. What happened to the cardiovascular system? If it is less than 120, sign of cardiovascular depression or QRS widening. If it is less than 115, then bradycardia, widening of the QRS complaint, ST segment elevation, ventricular ectopic bits, and T wave inversion. When it is less than 110, VT or BF can develop respiratory and cardiac arrest. In the GA, that is all when you are seeing the RA. In the GA, how are you going to diagnose? What is the diagnosis? You know that this syndrome is happening in the GA. The patient is under GA. Presenting sign like a rise, then fall in the blood pressure, bradycardia. The ECG may show nodal rhythm, ST segment changes, U waves, and widening of the cural complex. And recovery from the general anesthesia is usually delayed. So how are you going to treat it? Ensure oxygenation and circulatory support. Notify surgeon, please terminate the procedure. Consider invasive monitor if CV instability occurs, cardiovascular instability occurs. Send the blood for the electrolyte, creatinine, glucose, and AVG. Obtain a 12 read ECG. If there is seizures, what are you going to use? Short acting anticonvulsant midazolam and further a barbiturate or phenytoin can be added. Restless net and incoherence are particularly ominous signs. GA in the presence of TERP syndrome can lead to severe complication and even death. Dr. Nishan, now we'll go to the questions. Yes, ma'am. So this is regarding ethanol. Ethanol can be added to the irrigating fluid and the patient's breath can be analyzed every few minutes, true or false. But this is a very easy question, ma'am. Yeah, I know, I know. Sometimes you give no and keep it relaxed. <laughs> yeah, so I think there is nobody who's written false. Everybody has written true. Okay, the answer is true. Okay. Correct. This question I have given because thinking in mind, the question is being asked. How do you know the patient irrigating fluid is more or not? What are the tests you will do it? That's the reason to keep in the hammer in the brain. I gave this only. That ethanol added to the irrigating fluid and the patient breath, you can analyze every few minutes. That is the reason I have done so that it will be in the imprint in their mind. Yes, sir, very nice. Question five. This is question five regarding glycine. Glycine A is used as 2% irrigation fluid. True or false? Uh, B is an essential amino acid, true or false? So uh, C is metabolized to NH3 ammonia, true or false? D can cause seizures and visual disturbance in high plasma levels, true or false? 
or E is an excited trait, you know, neurotransmitter, true or false. So I think they can take a little bit of their time uh, because there are five true or false here. Glycine is used as 2% irrigation fluid, true or false? Uh, is glycine an essential amino acid? Yes, we are getting answers, ma'am. I think everybody is so attentive, no? Yes, this first one they believe is false. You're right. So uh, then the second other one? one is, second one, there's a little bit of a mixture. Some believe it is true. Most of them say it is true. Is an essential amino acid? No, yes. No, no, it is false. So, uh, most of them have written true. So glycine is not an essential amino acid. Then it is metabolized. Yes. So false, false, true, true, false. It can cause seizures and visual disturbances is high plasma level. That is true. Yes. It's an excitatory neuromender. No. It is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, I think many of them got confused with the B part. Yeah. It is not an essential amino acid. So, many have written, but yeah. So, this was a mixed, mixed response, ma'am. Okay. Okay, we can discuss later. Yes. We Why? Can, we can, yes. Okay. We'll go now. Relax. Yeah. The brain is not jammed. Now we can go to the second, next part. Yeah. So to summarize the treatment part, uh, surgery must be stopped. IV fluid should be stopped. Airway and breathing support respiration if necessary, intubation and ventilation. And bradycardia and hypotension should be treated with glycopyrrolate and vasopressures. When there is mild symptoms, when the sodium is more than 120, the fluid restriction and loop diuretic furosemide 20 milligram can be given. The severe symptoms, when there is sodium less than 120, 3% sodium chloride IV at a rate of lesser than 100 ml per hour, discontinue 3% sodium chloride when sodium becomes 120 milligram per liter. So when sodium is lesser than 120, you give 3% sodium chloride IV, how much amount? Less than 100 ml per hour. And rate of sodium increase should not exceed how much? 12 milli equivalent per liter in 24 hour period. This hypothermic saline should be administered through a large vein using a white bore IV cannula. If the patient has got chronic renal failure, we can go for a hemofiltration. The question is being asked, why if there is rapid administration of the hypertonic saline, what happened? It has been associated with central pontine myelinolysis to reduce the hazard of the saline administration. Serum osmolarity should be monitored and corrected aggressively only until symptoms substantially resolve. So hyponatremia, how you will correct? Should be corrected at a rate no faster than 1.5 milli equivalent per liter per hour. If you do not have the hypertonic saline, then you can use 8.4% sodium bicarbonate. This diuretic furosemide 40 milligram is only recommended if there is acute pulmonary edema. The cause is due to transient hypervolemia and furosemide may further decrease sodium, but it is e effective at removing free water. Sometimes question is being asked whether mannitol is helpful or not. Yes, it is very much helpful. Why? If you use 20% of the 100 ml of the mannitol, it causes less sodium loss than the loop diuretic. That, that's why mannitol is sometimes preferred. The patient must be prepared properly for the surgery. Prepare, what the preparation should be? It should include adequate hydration, electrolyte analysis, coagulation profile, limit the duration of surgery. The bag of irrigation fluid should not be placed higher than 60 centimeter. I'm repeatedly I'm telling you. The surgeon should limit the extent of bladder distension created by irrigant. 
frequent drainage of the bladder by the surgeon reduces the amount of irrigation absorbed. So what are the differential diagnosis? You can, lot of time, you'll be confused whether it is due to TERP or so. What are the differential diagnosis of the hypotension following TERP? It should come to your mind. Differential diagnosis of hypotension following TURP should always include hemorrhage, TURP syndrome, bladder perforation, myocardial infarction or ischemia, septicemia, DIC and anaphylaxis. Just again, I'm repeatedly I'm telling you the differential diagnosis of hypotension following TURP should always be in your mind. It may be hemorrhage, maybe TRP syndrome, maybe bladder perforation, myocardial infarction or ischemia, septicemia, DIC, and anaphylaxis. So in the bladder perforation, what happened? What happened? That is characterized by sudden decrease in the return of the irrigation solution from the bladder. What are the causes? Instrumentation, over distension of the bladder, how you diagnose? Pain, rigid, tender, distended abdomen, irregular return of the irrigation fluid, reflex limb movement at time of perforation, and the reflex type of movement of the limbs have been observed under both general and regional anesthesia. The question being asked, how we will know what is the extra peritoneal perforation diagnosis? or intraperforinal perforation symptoms. In the extraperitoneal perforation, there will be suprapubic or inguinal or periumbilical pain. But intraperitoneal perforation symptom develops faster and includes what? Severe shoulder pain caused by diaphragmatic irritation. And other features, pallor, sweating, nausea, vomiting, associated hypotension, depending on the size of perforation. Diagnosis of the bladder perforation is confirmed by the cystoerythrography. Treatment is immediate suprapubic cystotomy. What are the other complications occurs? Hypotension. So, as you know, hypotension following sympathetic blockade of the subarachnoid block occurs and uncommon with blocks extending to T10, but high blocks can cause resistant hypotension and bradycardia. This myocardial ischemia can occur 25% of the patient during TURP with myocardial infarction occur 1 to 3%. So rapid absorption of the large volume of the irrigation fluid can cause hypertension with reflex bradycardia and can precipitate acute cardiac failure and pulmonary edema. This rapid equilibration of the hypotonic fluid with the ECF can cause sudden hypotension and hypovolemia. These two parts, please remember, the rapid absorption when this large volume irrigation fluid causes hypertension and reflex bradycardia can precipitate the acute cardiac failure and pulmonary edema. So what will happen? This rapid e e equilibration of the hypotonic fluid with the ECF can cause sudden hypotension and hypovolemia. These two parts should be always my, keep in mind for in, uh, complications. So, Nishat, we'll go for the questions. Yes, so another question regarding TURP syndrome, ma'am. Uh, regarding TURP syndrome, all are correct except A, this may occur as quickly as 15 minutes, B, may occur 24 hours post-operatively, C, mortality is around 10%, D lacks the stereotypical presentation and E it has been reported to occur with endometrial ablation and neuretroscopic procedures also. So which of the following is incorrect? Well, all of them are correct except. Ma'am, uh, we have a lot of responses again and it is mostly uh, C mortality. Excellent. Statement. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, correct. As I told you, it occurs quickly as 15 minutes to post of 24 hours and lacks stereotypical presentation because it varies from patient to patient also, has been reported to occur with endometrial ablation and erotoscopic procedure also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. This is the answer. Question seven. Yes, another question. The use of large quantities of isotonic non-electrolyte solution for irrigation during prolonged 
transurethral resection of prostate often results in all of the following except uh, a hyponatremia b hemodilution and c hyperkalemia so which of the following does not occur hyponatremia hemodilution or hyperkalemia so yes ma'am we have a brisk response again and uh, most of them have mentioned hyperkalemia I think Nishan, I must feel very happy. The students are very much attentive and yeah. they are answering very well. Uh, right. As a teacher, it is a great satisfaction to me. And uh, thank you all my dear students. So, yeah. Nishan, we'll move. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Another complication is the bleeding and coagulopathy. I think Arul has raised the hand for what uh, we can discuss later. Yes, ma'am. They are all muted right now and uh, we will give everybody a chance to interact with you uh, once the session is over. Okay, so, okay. Uh, in the meantime, they are encouraged to ask, ask their question in the, uh, in the chat box itself. So, bleeding and coagulation they ask. So, what are the resection time? Generally, in the per minute, there is bleeding is 2.225 ml per minute. And uh, if you look at the weight, Weight and resected prostate, that is 20 to 50 ml per gram, the bleeding. So, serial hemoglobin level and hematocrit measurement is very important. Another thing is that there is release of plasminogen activator from the mucosa of the lower urinary tract to form plasmin, which digests the fibrinogen, leading to fibrinolysis and DIC. The systemic absorption of the thromboplast will also release from the prostatic tissue that also causes DIC. Am I right? So, resection time, you remember, it is 2 to 5 ml per minute and weight restricted prostate is 20 to 50 ml per gram. Characteristically, the platelet count and fibrogen in blood level may get abnormally low and how are you quantifying the methods like radioactive level of the RBCs or albumin? alteration in the electrical conductivity, colorimetric method. Very simple calculation you can find out by hemoglobin of the irrigation fluid gram per ml divided by the patient hemoglobin gram per liter divided, in, uh, sorry, multiply into amount of irrigating fluid. Accordingly, you can calculate the blood loss. How will you manage the DIC? Blood transfusion. FFP, platelets, cryoprecipitate, antifibrinolysis like ESCA, how much? 4 to 5 gram in the first hour, then 1 gram per hour. And you can also use IV tranexamic acid can be used to minimize the active blood loss. Next complication also we have discussed that is hypothermia. Why this hypothermia occurs? There is Absorption of the irrigation fluid stored at room temperature that causes shivering and irrigating fluid can reduce the body temperature at a rate of 1 degree centigrade per hour. Altered behavior of the hypothalamic thermoregulatory centers in the brain. So, warming of the fluid opoate decreases shivering. You can give tramadol. There is no problem to genetic patient giving the tramadol. You can give tramadol. Okay. Next come is the third blindness. What happened? There is transient blindness in the OT or PSU. Why? There is retinal dysfunction consequent to the hyperglycinemia. Glycin is a known inhibitory neurotransmitter. I have given you a question earlier. It is an excitatory neurometer. No, it is the inhibitory neurotransmitter. In animals, Glycin has been shown to inhibit the neuronal visual pathways. So what the patient will complain? Patient will complain blurred vision, halos around light, pupillary dilatation, unresponsible people. But remember that IOP and optic disc, they remain normal. If you do a fundoscopy during that time, you will see that IOP or optic disc, that fundoscopy, the optic disc remains normal and IOP is also normal. Post-operatively, vision gradually improves as the glycin in the blood level declines. So, when the recovery occurs, if there is third blindness is there, 
so as i have told you once glycine goes the same the recovery also come so it takes 8 to 48 hours after surgery during that time the patient has come for operation and become blind so you have to give him consolation that no don't worry because of the drug it has happened it will come up but i have never in my experience so many experience i have never seen any turb blindness i don't know you any post graduates uh, they are training they must have seen it but i have never come across with turb blindness in my so many years of career next comes septicemia why the septicemia occurs the prostate harbors many bacteria and these source of bacteremia through venous sinuses number one by the indwelling urinary catheters what the patient will have symptom chills fever tachycardia later on severe cases as you know all the septicemic features bradycardia hypotension cardiovascular collapse what treatment you will give aggressive treatment with anti antibiotic and cardiovascular support nishant will go for the questions Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is the eighth question. Uh, during transurethral resection of the prostate under spinal anesthesia, with a sensory level of uh, T10, a patient has sudden onset of sharp upper abdominal pain and nausea. Arterial blood pressure increases from 120 over 80 to 150 over 90 mmHg. The patient becomes diaphoretic. which of the following is the most likely diagnosis a bladder perforation b hemolysis c hypervolemia d hyponatremia or e myocardial ischemia so uh, do you do, during turp the sensory level is t10 and the patient has a sharp onset of upper abdominal pain and nausea and there is an increase in the blood pressure patient becomes diaphoretic ma'am most of them have uh, mentioned bladder perforation very good yeah the answer is bladder perforation very good at least i have told you extra peritoneal and intra peritoneal okay the shoulder pain i have told you so with that is the catchy answer from there only you can catch yes the bladder perforation i have given so many things just to confusing t10 pain nausea and all these things so just pin point is shoulder pain comes okay. straight blood perforation these are the tips okay so during the positioning what are the complication can occur turp done in which position lithotomy position which is elderly patient with osteoarthritis and prosthetic joints is associated with positioning difficulties and risk of musculoskeletal injury and pressure sore the question is asked lithotomy position associated with what are the things number 1 reduce tidal volume and functional residual capacity decrease vital capacity decrease pulmonary compliance increase likelihood of the gastric regurgitation cardiac preload may increase nerve injury to common peritoneal sciatic femoral nerves are likely in the lithotomy position the re resumption of the supine position from lithotomy could result in venous stasis in the lower limb and fall in blood pressure at the end of the procedures it can happen on the light planes of the ga penile erection may interfere with surgery it can usually be managed by deepening of the anesthesia and spinal anesthesia does not always prevent this complications other complications like bladder spasm this can be treated with anti muscarinics like hyoscine and oxybutynin but these drugs can increase the likelihood of delirium you have to be very careful alternatively benzodiazepines or a small dose of ketamine 250 microgram per day can be used some studies have done ketamine also can create a problem you have to be very careful so it is better to go for a benzodiazepines that is better clot retention this can occur if bladder irrigation is inadequate this can cause bladder over distension hence vagal st stimulation as well as pain and post operative some patient may have also 
cognitive impairment. So what post-operative care you should do? Monitor the patient in PSU, monitor the vitals and CNS in general, continue the irrigation, routine anal analgesic, NSAID and opioids, close monitoring for the septicemia, and broad spectrum antibiotics should be considered in perioperative period. Now the question nine comes. That is yeah. a tricky answer. You have to answer which is most useful. All this are, can be done, but which is the most useful answer we want? Patient having third become restless, dyspneic, and hypertension. Which test would be the most improved, simple, and most useful? Hematocrit, ABG, serum sodium, plasma hemoglobin. We have another brisk response, ma'am. A lot of. Yeah, the occasional ABGs, but most of them have mentioned uh, C. So most of them mentioned C. C. So the look at the answer. The answer is C. C. So anyway, congratulations, dear students. Then what is LTER? This question comes as a short note. What is LTER? This LTER delivers light energy to coagulate or vaporize the prostatic tissue, holmium laser enucleation of the prostate. What is HOLEP? The holmium, holmium laser enucleation of the prostate. It is a gold standard for the surgical treatment of the benign hypertrophy of the prostate. Here, the lower transfusion rate, catheterization time, shorter hospital stays. What are the advantages of the LTA? It uses normal saline as the irrigation of the bladder solution, minimizes the absorption of the irrigating fluid, minimizes or altogether eliminates the top syndrome, produces significantly less bleeding, which allows the procedure to be performed on an anticoagulated patient if needed, and de-emphasizes regional anesthesia as a preferred anesthesia technique. To summarize, TERP is a procedure carried out on a predominantly elderly population with a higher incidence of the coexisting disease. A thorough preoperative assessment is important in detecting the high-risk patient and helping to choose anesthetic techniques. Subarachnoid block is widely considered the most suitable technique, although GA has a similar morbidity and mortality profile. Subarachnoid blood up to T10 level provide excellent anesthesia without notable hypotension. TARP syndrome is a rare but potentially fatal complication. Early recognition and prompt treatment are essential. Blood loss is difficult to quantify and may be significant. Close attention to the patient clinical state and communication with the surgeons are vital. So the last questions. Is yes, the last question number 10, ma'am. Uh, methods to reduce blood loss in prosthetic surgery include all of the following except A, use of regional anesthesia, B, methoxamine, C, preoperative hemodilution, D, good surgical technique, and E, reducing the height of the irrigating fluid in TURP. So, which of the following will help in reduction of the blood loss except? So this time, ma'am, we have another mixed response. Yeah, I know they must have answered the most probably <laughs> B most of my student must have written, I think, no? Yeah, they're, 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 no, no. many of them have written E, but E is done, E is there. Yeah, it is a mixed response, ma'am. Okay, the answer is very surprisingly, you see. See, just, just concentrate. The method of reduced blood loss. I am not telling you the irrigation fluid absorption. So the because you can use regional anesthesia naturally, the it will be less methoxamine. Yes, you can use preoperative hemodilution. You can use good surgical technique. But reducing the height of the irrigation fluid is for the absorption, not it is helpful for the reduced blood loss. Thank you. I can stop my slide. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much.
this was uh, such an interesting talk and such an informative talk uh, you know in the in the we feel that it is just uh, 10 minutes and the whole talk is over but uh, it has been such a comprehensive and interesting talk by you which i'm sure has been must be very useful for all the post graduates now what is uh, that all these classes ma'am can be viewed offline also uh, after after this talk just in case there are some people who missed it it will be available on youtube also so uh, uh, if there are any questions then we encourage all the listeners to ask all these questions in the chat box in the meantime uh, there have not been very many questions ma'am uh, there was one by dr praveen nalla and he was a little uh, confused about fluid absorption and that that the uh, the flow chart that you showed acha okay that, can i explain again that flow chart that will be good ma'am that will be okay, good okay yeah. okay 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 the pathophysiology of tvrp yeah, very yeah, interesting yeah i'll say no problem yeah i hope nishant it is helpful to the students very useful ma'am very very useful see the chart okay yeah please look at my cursor the what are the torch syndrome risk factor one is the open prostatic sinus high irrigation pressure and the resection time if the surgeon is checking for the lengthy time and the hypotonic irritants so ultimately these are the a these are the risk factor means they they are the creating trouble makers the ultimately the trouble maker a will go to b, b and it will also go to c it will go to ultimately d also so when it goes to b means irrigation absorption that leads to increasing in the volume increase in the volume leads to what hypervolumia this increase in the volume also it is due to iv fluid gain so this hypervolumia will lead to left ventricular failure ultimately lead to pulmonary edema this hypervolumia also lead to hypertension bradycardia this hypertension and bradycardia will go to increase capillary leak hypovolemia and hypotension cardiovascular collapse let us come c we know it is due to irrigation absorption there will be also solute changes also occurs hyponatremia i have told you so c it will go to the culprit c means the decrease in what hyponatremia solute decrease main solute which what is decrease it is the sodium so hyponatremia so hypoosmolality pulmonary edema respiratory failure that leads to cardiovascular collapse and to death ultimately this is death when there is hypoosmolality it will go one way to pulmonary edema other way it will also go to hemolysis acute renal failure that leads to death or it can go to cerebral edema if there is cerebral edema cnh feature will come what will come visual changes and seizures encephalopathy all these thing ultimately if not treated leads to death acha this is the culprit when the solute decrease when the solute increase like suppose glycine and ammonia what i have this glycine can lead in this glycine will lead to ammonia if there is increase ammonia we have discussed what will happen it will lead to visual changes and seizures and also encephalopathy ultimately this lead to all the death am i clear i believe so ma'am i mean uh, i think uh... so what we'll do after some time ma'am is we'll allow them to unmute themselves just in case there are any questions uh, they want to act, ask directly they can ask to you also okay no problem so uh, there are, there have been a few uh, little queries ma'am dr muthu kumar wants to know uh, whether uh, caudal anesthesia may be given in uh, patients with severe uh, cardiac problems or a severe cardiac risk patient caudal anesthesia see caudal anesthesia in a geriatric patient to give is very difficult It is really it is all the things will be very much fused and uh, it is very difficult to give also yes you can but how much successful 
unless this cordal you give then you have to give little the drop volume to be little bit higher and the positioning you have to do uh, there is there may be also failure may be also there what i have told you that savat knot block and epidural block what are the difference i have also explained you yes you have uh, explained about the difference and the problems and advantages of cord I mean, epidural and uh, spinal so uh, and it all depends also on the type of cardiac disease that the patient is having so it needs to be individualized probably i guess uh, he also wants to know ma'am whether l turp that is the laser turp is similar to bipolar turp no no l no l it is divided into m turp and b turp m turp is the monopolar and b turp is the bipolar and that uh, laser laser turp that holmium laser holmium turp. that is a i have explained you know hmm. <clears throat> i have explained you what is the holmium turp i have detail i have told you why it is being done because it is a mainly it is done to uh, why this this is a mainly it is a uh, that light energy to coagulate or vaporize the prosthetic tissue and this holmium uh, laser enucleation of the prostate it has been suggested that it is a new gold standard which i have told you in my slide this prosthetic tissue is vaporized and the resulting heat dissipation coagulation that they from the small to medium blood vessel so when a large prosthetic gland is there it is very much helpful okay it is a as i have told you what are the advantages all five point like normal saline irrigation you can use irrigating fluid is less so this is not it, it is not like what m tot and b tot it is totally different it is a laser enucleation of the prostate here there is the light energy to coagulate or vaporize the prostatic tissue okay ma'am and uh... there is another question regarding uh, elderly patients with the ischemic heart disease on anticoagulants so what uh, should be the regime in such patients uh, same that same protocol which you are meeting with the patient is taking the drug it should uh, same that stop like I mean, if it is a urgency is not required you can say 3 uh, to 4 days before you can stop it you can there is no problem same regimen you can do Yes, ma'am. And uh, ma'am, I've allowed everybody to unmute themselves. Dr. Venkat Giri sir is here with us, and uh, he he wishes that uh, you know there should be a few words about T U R I S, that is transurethral resection in saline. I believe uh, that is uh, that is what what he wants to know. Transurethral resection in saline. Sir, it has not been used uh, nowadays, but only in this L turf you can use. There is no problem. Ah. Uh. sir uh, we are we are all unmuted now so if there are any questions or uh, any comments by uh, any of the listeners uh, venkat giri sir am i able to hear, uh, 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 yes. audible no yes yes ma'am you are audible we we are able to hear my, you my video is not coming i don't know why uh, you need to uh, switch on the camera maybe ma'am no why it's not coming so uh, if there are any questions that the audience wants to ask they can just unmute themselves and ask uh, or if there are any uh, comments or their experience and anybody wants to share yeah i just wanted some people's experience also because yes. uh, we have read so many time tort blindness tort blindness but i have never come across with tort blindness i have seen bladder perforation i have seen i have seen convulsions i have seen but i have never seen uh, tort blindness anybody who has seen please raise the hand and say and uh, how they have managed and all their practical experience i want to know uh, dr nishan have you seen any patient no not yet ma'am i have not seen uh, blindness venkatgiri sir is here i i also work with the urologist a lot but we now do two is that is transurethral resection in saline for last maybe around 10 years uh, my surgeon is doing it in saline so there is no uh, uh, urp syndrome but even earlier also though for this uh, 20 years working with uh, urology i did not see uh, ur syndrome uh, but with uh, saline uh, definitely it is this thing we don't uh, see any uh, Yeah, uh, they also it is better. Only thing is we can extend the resection time, not the uh, that rule of sixty hour will not apply when it is in saline. Uh, when a bigger prostate, ninety grams or hundred one twenty grams, they take more time. We manage with the fluid or lasix and uh, maintain that. We go for a longer time, one and a half to 
nearly two hours we have done the second two sitting was very very less uh, uh, only one case or so we did uh, uh, one or two cases the uh, second sitting otherwise it is uh, saline that is one uh, advantage with the saline Sir, actually, sir, some center also saline and reacted ringer uh, solution also they are using also. Yes. It is it conducts the current but not the thermal properties of the dispersed electrical current. So uh, no cutting. Uh, uh, so yes. it is some center they are using and electrolyte based solution and thereafter like irrigating solution of the top procedure. Yeah, that that, that, uh, that the receptor is separate. They have the receptor uh, separate uh, probe and this thing. No? So yeah. not that. Yeah. that is better. Yeah. Right, right. Naveen, sir. Yeah, no, I, uh, I was sitting through whole of the class and uh, it was a uh, uh, pleasure uh, listening to madam and uh, I really appreciate the active participation of all the uh, residents and the other delegates and uh, it's really nice. And uh, Dr. Nivedita Pani's video is off. I don't know why it's not coming. Just a minute. Uh, but uh, uh, it was it a good coming? It is now. Oh, yeah. it is, now it is coming, and uh, yeah, we can see you uh, uh, nice, nice and loud and clear. And uh, what better time would have been for this class that we are on the eve of International Women's Day, and we have got a, a lady teacher uh, talking about uh, taking a class on a subject of anesthesia. And it's really nice to have you, ma'am, with us. And uh, it was a very good class. And I'm very sure those who have missed it uh, will uh, see it on uh, ISA YouTube channel and ISA website, isaweb.in. Uh, thank you for sparing your valuable time with us. Uh, and I hope to see you in coming months more uh, for another class on any other interesting topic which you'd like to share with our dear students. Wish. Uh -huh. Uh, can I say something, Navin? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Please. I'm very much grateful to you, Dr. Venkatgizi, sir, and especially you, uh, who has given me really a good opportunity. And I really love to teach the students. And, uh, and Nishant is so nicely coordinated the thing. I'm very much thankful. So thank you very much to yeah. everybody. And I'm so happy at least I'll get another opportunity to teach my student, which is my passion. Thank you. So on this eve of uh, International Women's Day, uh, we, as a whole ISA National Governing Council, the President, Secretary, and the members of Governing Council, extend warm greetings to all. These greetings are for today, but every day. It's not today, but every day. And uh, salutes to the women power. And uh, see you all next week for another class on post burns contracture by Dr. Saeed Moid Ahmed from Aligarh. Thank you all for joining us today for the ISA online PG class. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Nishant, you are the host. So